Wait. What? Yeah! SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, a timeless classic loved by many. Typically, when people see games like this, they look past them, assuming they're just mediocre cash grabs with a popular kids franchise slapped onto them. And if you think like this, well, I don't blame you, because it's often very true, unfortunately. Especially for the games like this that dropped around the Wii era. They just didn't give a shit then. But Battle for Bikini Bottom was different. It was fucking awesome! So much thought and care was put into this damn game. If you like Spongebob and have yet to play it, what are you doing? I've said that before, and I'll say it again. This game truly does feel like you're exploring the areas from the show, and it feels like you're playing through one long episode or a movie. It's great. Of course, some things don't really make sense, but... Come on, it's a Spongebob game, who gives a shit? There's actually a few moments in the game where they're self-aware about the shit. It's kind of funny. Pretty humorous. Say, Bubba Buddy. Why am I having to pay all these golden spatulas to these toll booths? Because, SpongeBob! Well, can't argue with that. Ha. Uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom was truly something special. Once again, I repeat, if you like the funny yellow sponge and have yet to play the game, please just play it. So, BFBB was released all the way back in 2003. And that was it, right? Just a classic to look back fondly on. Right? People always make comments here and there about how cool it would be to see a remake, but we all knew that wasn't gonna happen. I mean, this game's no Mario 64 or anything like that. What are the odds of any of that coming in- Are you ready, kids? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm ready! <laughs> what? No way. Zombie? This has to be some lazy, upscaled port or something, right? Faithfully remade. Oh, okay, this shit's real. Yeah, when this remake was announced, I and many others were incredibly shocked. It just seemed so random. But I mean, damn, the fact that this is even happening was really cool. A true Battle for Bikini Bottom remake for all the modern platforms at the time. The Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated. Wow. So development seemingly started back in early 2018, and during 2018, some people predicted this remake was going to happen, because in March, THQ Nordic announced some plans for, quote, the global revival of several game titles connected with Nickelodeon properties. They straight up mentioned Spongebob here, so a BFBB remake was fucking given, it's not like they were gonna remake Creature from the Krusty Krab or some shit. So yeah, this remake was quote-unquote confirmed over a year before it was actually revealed, but many people, myself included, were unaware because I mean, come on, who was following THQ Nordic at the time? They also mentioned Jimmy Neutron. I think we're going to be seeing the Jimmy Neutron trilogy rehydrated. A couple months after the game was officially revealed, we saw some footage for the first time. The art style looked completely different compared to the original, but that was to be expected, and that wasn't necessarily a bad thing, as it looked spectacular. Why was that to be expected? Well, the original game is based on the art style of early SpongeBob episodes. You know, as it came out in... 2003. The art style of Spongebob has changed quite a bit throughout the years, and since this is a new release, it only really makes sense for them to base the visuals off of the new sort of art style. A bit unfortunate, I and many others prefer how older Spongebob looked, but whatever. The game was looking good. That's all that really mattered. The movement did look a bit jank though, which had many people concerned, but thankfully they ended up directly working with a prominent speedrunner of the original game, Shift, who obviously knew a ton about it. I mean, the dude doesn't seem to play anything else. I mean, shit, I gotta respect the Sigma grind set. Shift was able to help him out by pointing out the things that looked and felt wrong and off. And in the end, it paid off, because the final product feels really solid. Trust me, I would know. Eventually, like most games it released, it got a pretty cool collector's edition as well, called the Fun Edition. I've always wanted to buy it, I probably will at some point. You get Patrick Socks in real life, some cool statues, these little tiki keychains, very neat stuff here, better than most collector's editions. The game sold well and the majority saw it as a solid remake. Some fair criticism here and there, I personally was kinda disappointed that Mr. Krabs still wasn't... Mr. Krabs? So, do you want the trade? Shiny so, do you want the trade? Shunny, shut up! It was good. Rehydrated was good. But oh man, this game was god-awful apparently in the eyes of mainstream game reviewers. You know them, they only like games without gameplay, that they're basically movies because they're just spectacular at games. The Last of Us 2, oh boy, so dope! IGN gave Spongebob a 5 out of 10. But get this, GameSpot gave it a 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10! 
only total dog shit you've ever seen me score like that. What the fuck? I was very afraid that devs and publishers would see how these mainstream reviewers reacted to the game and think because a couple mainstream reviewers gave it bad scores, that means the general public also thought the game was god-awful and we wouldn't be seeing any more games like this one. But uh, luckily the backlash was pretty strong. I think we got the point across. Nice job, team. Complaining about it not being challenging and then bitching when you get knocked off the sandcastle? Complaining about comedic timing being off when you're purposefully waiting to go to the next dialogue box? In one section of the puzzle, all you need to do is stand on a button, and that button opens a gate for you to bowl a bubble into so you can progress. The only problem is that during Spongebob's wind-up animation for bowling, he walks forward. That means you fall off of the button, which closes the gate and prevents you from bowling the bubble where you intended, when you intended. Pro tip! Obviously go ahead and make your own decisions, but I'd highly suggest not taking mainstream game review companies like GameSpot and IGN seriously. They get one random person's quick little opinion on the game and rush the video out while the game is still trendy. In other words, they mean nothing. Trust Chaos instead. He's very enlightened and doesn't have any biases whatsoever. Rehydrated. I love Rehydrated. For whatever reason, I felt compelled to speedrun the game a year ago and have been playing the game on and off. I don't mean to flex, but I currently hold lagless hundo world record and I'm the fourth person ever got a lagless sub 50 time in 77 spatulas. Ladies, ladies, one at a time. Lagless? What is lag? Something ducks walk on? If you're wondering what lag is in the context of these speedruns, well, here you go. It's stupid. Like it's stupid. I'm at the point where I know this game inside and out. It's pretty pathetic in all honesty. Steam says I've logged a little over 410 hours on it, but that number is only counting the latest version at the time you play, and you play downgraded versions for pretty much every speedrun, so I'd say add at least another extra 100 hours to that. It has problems. You can say that about literally anything in existence, but I love Rehydrated to a ridiculous degree, and it's pretty hard for me to really explain why. So, since this game went well, people like me were all wondering, are they gonna make any more Spongebob games like this? Well, there's a somewhat similar game that was released after the OG Battle for Bikini Bottom, based on the original Spongebob movie from 2004. And the game based on the movie came out a month before the movie. What the fuck? The movie game is seen as objectively worse than Battle for Bikini Bottom. It's got a lot of filler, you end up replaying the same shit over and over, but it's still a pretty good game that uses the same engine. I've always seen it as a more linear PFBB. Now linear doesn't always mean bad, it's all preference really, but the rehashed content is what really hurts the game in my and many other people's opinions. So yeah, the movie game. Nowhere near as iconic as PFBB. People thought they were gonna remake this next, but I mean... No. As much as I'd love to see that, too, it was a game to promote a movie that came out in 2004. So unless they remade the movie or something, they're not remaking this, come on, it makes no sense. But I still had my hopes up and was expecting a new rehydrated type Spongebob game, and wow, look at that, they're doing it. THQ Nordic posts a link on their Twitter to a new trailer for a new game called Spongebob Squarepants The Cosmic Shake, made by Purple Lamp, the same team that made Rehydrated. The tweet said the game was coming to PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Hmm, no Switch release. Interesting, very interesting. I mean, considering how the Rehydrate port went over on Switch, I'm not too surprised. It's not that easy to get stuff running on there. Sometimes the hardware is just not powerful enough to- Did they not double check the tweet before posting it? Okay, PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch. Let's check the trailer out, oh boy. It has a great like to dislike ratio, that's always a good sign. Oh no, they're baiting us, there's no check mark next to THQ Nordic. Yay, yeah, SRB, what? So it starts off, they're playing Sweet Victory, a song from one of the most iconic Spongebob moments. It'd be even cooler if they're playing Travis Scott. Spongebob and this weirdly small Patrick get sucked into a portal. Spongebob and Sandy are about to do a karate fight, and we got Squidward with some, um, uh, drip, I think? Is that what the kids say? They fall into another portal, and we got that prehistoric Spongebob shit from that one Time Machine episode. Classic episode right here. Another portal. Snail, Spongebob, Dutchman. Spongebob is riding a seahorse, who I would assume is Mystery from that one episode. Damn, look at that hair, dude. It's so sick. Sweet victory continues, and I got really scared there for a second. It looked like Spongebob was about to do the Fortnite dance. Oh boy, please don't. I really hope Epic Games didn't buy this game to put in their shitty adware launcher. And we get the title of the game along with Puff jamming with the guitar while knocking shit over. She puffs up, and it abruptly ends. I kinda like that, no fade out, no nothing. I hope that was intentional, I mean, as we saw, THQ Nordic is quite prone to making mistakes. So there we have it, and that's all we got. Visually, it looks fantastic, but that's not gameplay footage, so that doesn't mean shit. 
This is a no gameplay trailer. Yeah, no gameplay. Just like the Rehydrate reveal, no gameplay here. Just an announcement, unfortunately. If you want to view that as unfortunate. Personally, I find it kind of hype because now we'll have to wait some more time to see what the game actually looks like. That sounds very shillish. I'm very curious as to how Sweet Victory ties into the game. Maybe it was just something they threw in the trailer, I don't know. But my biggest question is, what is up with Patrick? What is going on here? He looks like he got brilliant diamond shining pearled. Not a lot of info here for the game, but there is a website, so let's check that out. The official promo art here is nice. I really dig the style. It looks like it was done by the same artist or artist who made the official rehydrate art. Something that jumped out to me as soon as I went on the page was that it doesn't say PC anymore. It has a Windows logo, and for some reason that really concerned me, I thought it was actually an Epic, but that doesn't even correlate. But thankfully no, it's coming out in Steam. Whoa, thank god. You can pre-order now for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Not Switch yet, apparently. Maybe that's another mistake on THQ Nordic's part, as they've already forgotten about the existence of the Switch once before. The bottom of the page has some screenshots, but then you realize... They're just stills from the trailer already saw that wasn't gameplay. Uh -huh. But there is a brief description here of the game, so let's check that out. Are you ready? Wish granting mermaids tears in the hands of Spongebob and Patrick. What could possibly go wrong? Sure, the very fabric holding the very universe very together could come very undone, opening up portals to wish worlds full of knights, cowboys, pirates, and prehistoric snails, but that's nothing everyone's favorite sponge can't handle. With the right cosmic costume, everybody do the cosmic shake. No thanks. Key features. Unlock classic and new platforming skills like the fish hook swing and karate kick, don more than 30 sponge-tastic costumes like Snail Bob and Spongegar, travel to seven distinct wish worlds like Wild West Jellyfish Fields and Halloween Rock Bottom, experience all the buddy movie banter with Spongebob's permanent companion, Balloon Patrick, meet all your favorite characters from the series, voiced by their original actors. Enjoy the in-game soundtrack featuring 101 songs from the series, including Sweet Victory. Okay, so this tells us some more. Unlock classic and new platforming skills like the fish hook swing and karate kick. So I'm gonna assume this is sort of like how in Battle for Bikini Bottom you unlock the bubble bowling and cruise bubble moves. Interesting, I'm a big fan of that sort of gameplay mechanic where you collect more moves as the story progresses, and then you go back to old areas to use those new moves to get stuff you couldn't get before. You know that shit? I like that. Don more than 30 sponge-tastic costumes like Snail Bob and Spongegar. Costumes are always very fun, I can appreciate that. Definitely a feature I liked from Crash 4. We got two of the worlds here, Wish Worlds as they seem to be called. Not sure if these are going to be the actual names of them, but Wild West Jellyfish Fields and Halloween Rock Bottom. Very interesting. Switching up the mood and feel it would seem, so these places aren't identical to how they were in BFBB. I like that a lot. And that weird little Patrick is called Balloon Patrick, and he's a... permanent companion. All the characters are going to be voiced by their original actors this time, so we're finally getting the real crabs, boys. No more soul. Would you like to trade shiny objects? 101 songs from the series, that's... Pretty wild. The game is going to include actual songs from the series, including Sweet Victory, so it seems Sweet Victory wasn't just something they decided to throw into the trailer. Neat. I have a feeling this song is going to appear at one of the most important moments in the game or something. Kind of seems like a big thing they're hyping up here. I don't know. So that's all we have for info right now, really. And Marshmallow Puff. This is a release I'm really looking forward to. The industry really needs more games like this. I'm so sick of people thinking platformers are a dead, outdated genre. Shut up! Who knows, if this game feels similar enough to Rehydrate, maybe I'll even speedrun it, but me deciding to speedrun the game is very random. I've said that before, I don't really have a say in that unfortunately, I don't have much control over my mind. No release date specified, but they said, soon, 